Welcome back to Bash Bros in episode 91 of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. And we are back here in March week 2 of 2023. So you've missed two weeks of action, so let's take a look at all the stuff that you've missed since the We Rise pay-per-view. I was wrong. It was the Obsession pay-per-view you guys were here for last. The We Rise pay-per-view was the last one uploaded on the channel. That's where I'm getting... See, that's where it went wrong, okay? Moving on. So, the Fallout show for the Obsession pay-per-view with the debut of Kenny Omega. Kenny comes out and promises, promises that he will defend the belt against top talent from around the world, including the former champion Penta tonight. Then, in a match later on as a part of the P12, Miles Kamen is able to get an upset over Sonico with a flash pinfall. In the next match, also a part of the P12, Ray Phoenix is able to defeat Davy Boy Smith to get those three points in the P12 tournament. Next up, as Penta is waiting in the ring for Kenny Omega to come out for their title match, the Titan Tron comes on and shows Kenny Omega has been laid out backstage. Conor McGregor comes out and says the match has been called off and he will give an update later tonight. Next up in a match for the Notorious Pro Wrestling Tag Team Titles, Aussie Open defeat the NIC whenever Eddie Dennis tries to interfere but a returning Jonathan Grisham thwarts Eddie Dennis's attempt. And then in the main event Conor McGregor comes out and announces that a battle royal will take place instead of a title match tonight and the winner will receive a title shot at the I Your Bollocks pay-per-view. The winner of that battle royal is Pac and Penta is a little bit pissed about this considering that Kenny earlier in the night said he would get a title match but that, that will be touched upon during today's episode. 69 rated show overall which is pretty damn good. Then on to next week's Wanted. This is March week one. The Barbed Wire Dolls. Crazy Mary Dobson and Mad Marley Quinn reunite to defeat Nicole Matthews and Debbie Keitel. But after the match, Jake the Snake Robert gives Mary Dobson one more chance to come back to the pit. I haven't finalised on that being the stable name. It could be. I like it like as an homage to the snake pit. But we'll see. But she declines. And Jake the Snake Robert says there will be repercussions for her actions. Then in another P12 match, Davy Boysmith defeats the young Miles Cayman to get the three points. But afterwards, Davy shakes Miles' hands, and then Doug Williams comes into the ring and offers Davy Boysmith an embassy jersey, which he accepts. So this has been discussed before that Davy would probably join the British Wrestling Embassy with Natalia, just to kind of give him a new faction and allow him to be maybe the main eventer of that group. Miles came and then can kind of be the mid-card guy and finally, you know, the Billington Bulldogs to be the tag team. The reason for this is Davey is, I believe, the cousin of the Billington Bulldogs in real life. I believe that's correct. So it just kind of makes sense that he might want to join them. <coughs> Next up then, Jonathan Grisham makes his in-ring return and defeats Eddie Dennis in a good match, 68 rated. Afterwards then, whilst Epitaph are scarpering up the entrance ramp, CCK say that they are not done with them yet and that at the pay-per-view there will be a six-man tag. Backstage angle then, as Chris Hero watches a monitor backstage for Claudio Castagnoli's upcoming match, James Storm smashes a beer bottle on his head from behind. And in the main event, Claudio Castagnoli defeated Ace Austin in a bit of a disappointing match, 61. I think they didn't really click, if I remember correctly. But still, the show overall is 62, which is not bad at all. So, as you may have seen during that recap, we've had quite a few of our P12 matchups. So, it's 
get an update on the blocks for the P12. And this is how block A stands. At the top of the bunch, Easton Reese with only one match to go, sitting on nine points. Joint second is damn near everyone else, Sonico, Ray Phoenix, Davy Boy and Miles Kamen, all sitting on six points. And at the bottom of the pile with only three points, Joe Henning. Joint first then in block B is Claudio Castagnoli and Kip Sabian. Kip has wrestled all of his matches. So to win the block, Claudio just needs one more win. In second place then, in block B, is joint between Stevie Boy. He has to make a bit of a comeback, is Stevie Boy. And Will Hobbs, not being done so dirty this time around. And then joint bottom of the pile, Ace Austin and Mark Haskins. We can't get a win to save their life. Mark Haskins is just having a bad time, guy. <laughs> just having a bad time, all around. Let's talk about news and start with our own company. We've hired a new colour commentator, uh, Stu Bennett. So I don't know if NXT already had him on just a handshake or if that had been renegotiated with him. Uh, maybe it looks like it was renegotiation. Um, but when he went the handshake deal, I was like, all right, cool. Uh, TNT were negotiating with him. So I thought, let's, let's throw our hats into the ring. His color commentating is nutty 75 which is great and is announcing not bad at all either 65 uh, so he has been added to our commentary team and taken uh, over from Andy Coyne who wasn't great maybe I think he was ranging from 50 to 60s so he is definitely going to be a much needed boost to our commentary team of Sean Waltman and Tom Campbell and as you might remember I did mention that AEW and WWE were in a bidding war for Becky Lynch. <sighs> yeah, the boring option happened and Becky Lynch stayed with WWE. Got it. <laughs> Would have really liked to have seen her go to AEW. Um, Ronda Rousey is currently in AEW. So it'd been nice to maybe see them continue that feud. But yeah, it's really boring. Oh well, what can you do? Okay, so that is everything covered from what you've missed to the P12 to the news. Um, yeah, only thing left to do now is book the show, so let's do that, shall we? Okay, and we are back, coming at you from the Liquid Room in Scotland. That's where we are. <laughs> it is Thursday Night Wanted. So here is the card. Um, a couple more angles on the pre-show than I would have liked, but I actually added one or two more segments and I had my bookie notes so not too bad Um also our main event is normally on a TV show we put our main events about 20 minutes it's only 15 with two minutes for entrances and that's because uh, Ray Phoenix versus Sonico got the high spots instruction to kind of capitalize on Ray Phoenix really 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 good kind of aerial and flashiness uh, attributes um, and you can't go more than 15 minutes with that kind of special instruction, so that's why it's only 15. But it meant that there was more time for promos. So, let's start the show, shall we? Backstage promo with Will Hobbs. He says, um, not only will he have to deal with that weasel, Ace Austin, as you know, they have a history with Will being Ace's former muscle. He now has to deal with another weasel like Jay Lethal and he begs him, he begs him to come and face him like a man in the ring tonight. 49 segment which is okay. Speaking of Ace Austin, another backstage promo and Ace laments, he laments that why does everyone want a piece of him? Not, not that way, not that way. But you know, he has to deal with that freak Kip Sabian and now his former muscle Former best friend, Will Hobbs, you know, he has to deal with him in the P12. And all this while, you know, Angelina loves, like, fawning over him. Like, you're like, oh, no, it'll be okay, baby, don't worry. Like, that sort of stuff. Um, and that's a 65 rated segment, which is good. Um, the chemistry bonus with Ace and Angelina really helps Ace in the promos. And in a pre-show match, Maki Ito, Michael Satamora, and Riho defeat Tennille Dashwood, Debbie Keitel, and Nicole Matthews. Uh, Riho had a 51, Michael had a 66, Maki had a 56, Debbie a 54, Tanil a 60, Nicole a 51. 62 rated match overall, which is good, very good. Then on to the main show. 
Ace Austin defeated Will Hobbs in 1440 after an interference from Jay Lethal. Jay would slide on in and low blow Will Hobbs again. That's the second low blow to Will Hobbs in like two weeks. R.I.P. Will Hobbs nuts. Uh, and that's another three points for Ace Austin in the P12. So it's a 65 for Ace, which is good, very good. And uh, 58 from Will Hobbs, uh, 65 overall. Not bad at all, not bad from anyone there, that's all very good. Post-match then, uh, the lights go out and a figure <laughs> with a cardboard box on his head uh, is in the ring with Ace Austin and Angelina Love. And then Vicky Haskins removes the box from Kip's head, revealing it's Kip. Ace and Angelina Love then run away. 61 rated segment. So this is just to debut Kip Sabian's new gimmick, the underrated gimmick, you know, that he's doing in AEW at the minute. Uh, I think it's cooler than his super bad gimmick. Plus, with him now being partnered with Vicky Haskins, well, Vicky now, she's not called Vicky Haskins anymore. I, I took Vicky, I took Haskins out of her name because of the affair in the Notorious Universe. Um, so yeah, that's, and then it kind of ties in with her like gothic, uh, kind of mysterious vibe that Vicky would give off, so yeah, all in all very good. Speaking of Mark Hass, god damn it Mark, I'm so sorry dude. <laughs> god damn it. So Mark Haskins defeats Stevie Boy with a quick roll up, uh, 62 from Mark, 52 from Stevie Boy, 57 overall, which is okay. So Mark's storyline currently is that he's fighting injured in the tournament after the assault from Vicky and Kip Sabian, and that is another loss for Stevie Boy to an injured opponent, which leads on to the post-match angle. Kaylee Ray then gets in Stevie Boy's face, berating him for losing to an injured opponent, and storms off from the rest of Filthy Generation. 49 segment. So this has kind of been a slow burner for a while. I have talked about it before. My plan is Kaylee Ray will get her kind of a repush in the women's division here on Notorious and Filthy Generation are probably going to get dropped down to Rev Pro. Reason being, although I think Stevie Boy can be a good mid-carder on Notorious, um, I don't feel like the tag team, Kings of Catch, Lewis Garvin and Aspen Faith are particularly good enough to stay up in Notorious. They are only bringing in about 40s in their matches. so. Overall, I think they will be better utilised down in Rev Pro. Stevie Boy can maybe go to the Cruiserweight division and uh, Filthy Generation can then be in the Tag division. And Kelly Ray is very much good enough to be in the title picture in Notorious. So that'll all kind of happen over the next month or so. Next, in a backstage angle, the Lucha Bros are complaining to Conor McGregor. Pentagon is furious that even though Kenny Omega personally offered him a title shot, the match never went ahead and Pac went on to win the battle royal for a shot at the pay-per-view. And Ray is furious because he hasn't yet got his hands on Sonico who's been taunting him throughout the P12 tournament. Kenny Omega, bandaged and injured, storms into the office and demands a word with Conor McGregor. Conor's like, I'm kind of busy here. Kenny then turns around to Pentagon and says, you want your match, you'll have your match, you will be in the pay-per-view match. It's now a three-way. Using his championship privilege, I don't know, champion privilege, I don't know. Connor's like, right, okay, fine then, if that's how you want to do it. He then says to Ray, Ray, you can have your match with Sonic go in the main event tonight as a part of the P12. Lucha Brothers leave, happy that they've got what they want, and the doors close, and we don't quite hear what is said between Connor and Kenny. Kenny obviously upset that he was attacked backstage before his match last week, two weeks ago. Next up then, Grizzled Young Vets defeat the Velocities in 1502 when Zach Gibson pinned in London with a ticket to ride. Gibson had a 66, James had a 60, Jude a 68, Paris De Silva a 63, all in all a 67. That's a very good match. That is a very good match, which brings me on to my next point. So the Velocities, um, as a part of the Aussie Open versus Grizzled Young Vets feud, are going to get a bit of a push. They're going to be uh, upgraded to kind of maybe title contenders. I mean, like those are good, very good performances. Like 60, it's a really good performance. So they will probably kind of be upgraded then to a tag team, and the Billington Bulldogs will then be dropped down to 
the jobber face tag team. Post match then, the prestige whip the shit out of the velocities, one hell of a push, huh? And uh, until Aussie Open make the save, helping their fellow Australian brothers, I guess. They are like, you know, if you just wanted a title match, you didn't have to go through all this bother. Let's go. Aussie Open versus Grizzly Young Vets at the pay-per-view. And Nick Aldis takes the mic and says, no. No. We, we don't do it on your terms. We do it on our terms. And we'll take a title shot when we're good and ready to take a title shot. And walk away. Mind games, guys. Mind games. 57 rated segment. And in our main event, in a bout that had great wrestling and great heat, Ray Phoenix defeated Sonico with a Meteora. Ray a 72, Sonico a 58. Good chemistry bonus for uh, Sonico and Jake. 69 rated overall. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. 69 rated segment. Thought maybe we'd break into the 70s with our Conor McGregor promo stuff there. But still, I'll take it. So just two uh, tidbits sure, of news before we wrap up for today. WWE are looking to extend the contract of Randy Orton. No real surprise there. Also one of our Six Nation partners, WXW, it recently raised the medium size. Uh, so they have, so we are, we are above them in the world rankings, but they are bigger than us just due to their popularity in Europe. They've also just hired Ken Malmsteen, who is our jobber, so I'm not overly fussed that he <laughs> that they have him, but again, it's a handshake deal, so he's not exclusive. But that is it for this week. If you enjoyed this episode, do leave a like and subscribe to the Bash Bros channel for more Notorious and other great shows. We just did an On The Fence for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. That'll probably date this episode of when I'm recording. This is not caught out for like another three weeks. So that on the vents will have been out for three weeks at that. But we've got other stuff. So yeah, check that out. God damn it. Um, if you have any ideas for booking ideas, tag teams, feuds, storylines, you name it and I will try book it for you. All that being said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros.